If playing around with beads is something you have been interested in, this is the video for you. We got show me love, show me love. Everybody. My name is Marley Bird. I am your bi crafty bestie here to show you how to incorporate beads into your crochet projects. Now, I know in this entire summit, we have focused a lot on sweaters, and there have been so many great tutorials given to you for how to construct different types of sweaters using different techniques. Well, Instead of showing you how to do another sweater, I'm going to show you how you can use beads to embellish those sweaters. There's a couple things that you need to be aware of before you start to incorporate beads into a project. So my goal is to show you some ideas for how to add those beads, things that you should be leery of, and then talk you through where I would suggest adding beads to different projects. If that sounds like something you would be interested in, stick around and we're going to have a lot of fun. Before we begin, I do want to mention there is a handout that I put together for this video. It includes a lot of information about crocheting with beads, more information than we will discuss here in the video, but it's a great tool to have on hand whenever you're ready to work with beads. It also includes a pattern for a super simple crochet chain necklace, which is a great way to introduce yourself to working with beads and crochet thread just to get started on a project. Okay, so you can take a look at that handout whenever you want, but from here on out, we are going to discuss the usage of beads just like if we were sitting around a table together. Does that sound good? I hope so too. All right, let's go ahead and take a look right down here at my table. As you look down here, you can see I have a couple of swatches built up. This little swatch right here is actually what you would create if you followed the handout that I gave you. It walks you through how to add the beads that look just like this, that kind of give you this really great herringbone. It shows you how to add beads working in double crochets, um, whether in the top or the bottom. And it also walks you through how to read a chart so that you can add beads to create some really great shapes. We are also going to talk about adding beads to a slip stitch edge and that is actually one of the number one ways I would recommend using beads on garments to begin with. Okay so when you add beads to a slip stitch edge you can see it just is a great way to really define the edge of a piece. Now, whether you are using square beads, just like these, these are six millimeters square or cube beads, or if you're using round beads, you'll have a very similar look, but you can see here, it defines the edge of this piece. It also adds a little bit of weight to make it hang just a little bit better, right? So this is the number one way I would mention using the beads into any sort of project that you're working on. Now, having said that, that means that just about any pattern that you are working with, as long as you have beads that will fit into that yarn and you could work a slip stitch edge around either the hem or the collar or the arms or the neckline, you can absolutely use this technique. And it is as simple as pulling up a bead and then doing a slip stitch, pulling up a bead, doing a slip stitch. It really is quite easy to complete and all of the instructions are in your handout. Now, another way to use this very similar technique, but instead of using it with slip stitches, we use it with the chain, is like this. Looking down here, you can see this really awesome head wrap slash scarf slash belt, whatever you want to use this as, you can use it. But you can see that I added beads at a certain distance between each other and they're worked into just a basic chain, okay? Nothing else happened and said, I pulled up a bead, did a chain, did a couple chains, added a bead, did a couple chains, added a bead, okay? So when I did that, I get this really cool highlight sort of sequency look into a project that is pretty, pretty darn awesome, very easy, right? So you could add a belt or a sash or a head wrap or a scarf to any project and get a very awesome look just like this. 
The other thing I want to mention here is that when you work with beads, you will very rarely ever put the beads one on top of each other, one row on top of each other. You'll see here that there is a row of beads, but then the, the row on top of it is just a plain row. There are no beads added to that row. And then there's another row of beads and then a plain row. The reason you want to do that is one, the weight of the beads will really pull down on your garment. But two, the beads start to get out of whack and don't really look that good when they're on top of each other because they take up too much space. Um, but if you get them a little bit of room, a little bit of cushion, you get a really great look here. Now, like I said, this piece here, this is a very simple pattern. Um, it's one that I designed originally to be a shawl. And as I got going, I was like, there is no way this will be something anybody could wear. Cause this is very, this is very weighty. This is very weighty, but as I was working on it, I was like, you know what? This is a great head wrap. This is a great scarf. This is a great belt. And if you look at the back side, you can see it's nice and smooth. And so it rests beautifully on the head with all of the beads and sparkle on the front half, okay? So that's a whole nother thing. When you're adding beads to your project, whether you are pre-stringing your beads or you're adding them with a crochet hook, um, each stitch at a time, you want to make sure you're giving some thought to where this garment is going to land on your body. Having beads along your shoulders where the weight of the garment is really going to press into your shoulders, that's probably not the best idea because the beads could pop through to the wrong side and really start to to hurt, be very uncomfortable. Um, or if you're wearing a purse or a backpack, it would begin to pull on those, um, those those points of pressure, right? So you do want to give thought to where you are adding beads to your garment. Having said that, you absolutely could add beads down the raglan line of a garment to really highlight that raglan shaping. You could highlight particular intarsia type um, stitches that you have in a garment. Maybe you have intarsia heart and you want to make sure that the outline of that heart has some beads on it. You could do that uh, to really highlight these features. Just be very aware as you're adding those beads, if it's in such a position that it's going to pop through to the back side, that is going to be uncomfortable. So that is something you definitely want to give thought to as you're working through the process of adding beads to your garment. Now I do want to take another look at the little swatch that you could work up with your handout. And if you take a look down here, I want you to notice down here at the bottom, we have our row of beads added. And then you'll see that there is a little bit of space between this row and that row. And that's because there is a row of just single crochets worked all the way back. And then it's a row of beads added in and then single crochets worked back. And then this row here, this is actually double crochets. And these stitches, see how they look like they're right on top of each other? But the difference there is that these double crochets, a bead is added to the top yarn over and draw through, and one is added to the bottom yarn over and draw through. So you can get this sort of chevron zigzag look all in one row of double crochets and get a really cool effect. Again, using beads to add definition or a little bit of razzle dazzle to your garment is a great idea. Doing an all over bead effect can really add a lot of weight to your garment. So you do want to make sure you um, have tested the weight of the beads along with the yarn that you're using because say you're using like an alpaca yarn with a glass bead, by the time you wear that garment, it's going to be dragging the floor when it started off as a crop top. It's just not going to hold that weight. So when you're working with beads, you definitely want to make sure that you're doing swatches like this to, to feel the weight of the beads on the garment and to make sure that they aren't going to overpower the piece itself, okay? Now let's take a look up here at this heart. This heart right here, these beads are added every other row. Okay, every other row. You'll also notice that they are on um, the wrong side. As you're working this, these beads are actually added as I'm working along the row this way. When I pull them up, it makes them lay on this side, okay? So that is one thing I do want to point out. 
There are different ways that you can add beads to the right side of your piece when you're on the right side. But typically when you're adding beads that are pre-strung, let's talk about it that way. When you're adding beads that are pre-strung, you usually will pull those beads up to the fabric as you are looking at the wrong side, but it places the bead on the right side. So that's something to definitely be aware of as you're planning different um, aspects of uh, your embellishments. Going back to this heart, like I said, it's every other row, so that way we can really get this shape and definition. And one thing about this heart is you can tell it's a heart because it's a pretty easy geometric shape. But what if we wanted to try something a little bit different? Let me go ahead and pull in my next little sample so that you can see how this looks up. And what I want you to notice here is that we have this really great graph right here, right? You can easily see that this is supposed to be a sheep. And then this down here, this is the sheep separated by one row of just regular single crochets, okay? So they clearly look different. This clearly is going to be larger than this in the actual fabric, if you think of this as representative of the fabric, correct? Where this here, you might think, oh, that's going to look really great. <clears throat> but what if I told you this sort of blob of beads here, this is literally the representation of this chart in bead form. It represents that. It, it does not look the same. It does not look good. So this is a good example of why you want to definitely make sure you space these out. However, I want to point out that this isn't necessarily like as easy of a geometric shape as like a heart, right? It's not the same. You have to kind of think about this pictorially. And so when you take this and you space it out to where you have a row between each one, you get something a little bit closer to looking a little bit closer to a sheep, but nowhere close to a sheep, right? Like it's, you could look at this. I don't know what that, if I didn't have this and you just saw this, you'd be like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. So that's something you really need to pay attention to. As you're deciding to embellish different pieces, maybe you thought, oh, I could just take this pictorial image and put this in a sweater to kind of jazz up something and it'll look like I have this great, let's use the sheet for example. By the time you get it on your sweater, if you did the one where you added it every row, it's going to look like a hot mess. And if you did it where you added the one every other row, it's going to look like a hot mess. Like it doesn't really look right. So the importance of doing gauge swatches to really test out those shapes that you think you're going to add into a garment is very important for this very example, because you just don't know how it's going to look. And you don't have to use the same yarn or beads you plan on using in the garment. You could absolutely use worsted weight and pony beads, just like I did here to test items out. I do like to draw out different things that I'm working on in a program called Stitch Fiddle, but you could also just use plain graph paper and like a, a pen, right? And put dots wherever you plan on having a bead. And that's a great tool for you to be able to easily plot out where you want beads added. One thing to remember is that when you're looking at graph paper, if we think of it as a basic square, a single crochet is typically pretty much the size of a square. So it's a pretty good representation. But if you're looking at um, like double crochets and stuff, make sure you plan accordingly with your, your graph paper so that way you can kind of get a pretty good image of, okay, so this is the size of my graph paper. This is the size I want it on my, on my sweater. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope so. So what I thought I would do now is I'm going to pull in some yarn and I'm going to have some beads. I should, let's just, let's just look down here. So I have some yarn here and I pre-strung some beads. Now pre-strung literally is what it sounds like. You just put the beads on your yarn prior to using it. The biggest thing when you pre-string beads is one, the yarn you're using, you need to make sure it's durable enough to withstand the push and pull of the beads. If you're using glass beads, plastic beads, um, stone beads, they are not really as, as smooth 
at the, the join as you might think, and they can rough up the yarn, okay? So you really need to take into account how the beads are going to interact with the yarn you are choosing. Because as these beads are constantly being pushed down the yarn like so, it could start to shred your yarn. And if you're working on a project where the bead count is like super important and cutting the yarn or rejoining the yarn can be a real pain in the rear. Um, or just when the yarn breaks and all your beads go everywhere, that's awful. So that's something you definitely want to take into account when you're choosing your yarns with um, your beads, okay? You want to make sure that you're thinking about that. Also, when you pre-string beads, if you're going in a color, a color sequence, you need to remember you're going to pre-string them in the backwards order of that color sequence. So that way, when you are using your first bead, it's the first color you need. Does that make sense? So that way you can work with it. If you don't pre-string beads, you can always apply a bead after the fact by pulling up <clears throat> um, using a smaller hook. I had a smaller hook here. Um, what did I do with it? There it is. So you could use a smaller hook and grab some beads. And as long as your hook will fit through the bead, then you can grab the loop that would be on your, your work and then push that bead down onto your work. So that's a great way to add beads when you just, you're like, you know what, I kind of feel like adding a bead right here. It's a great way to do that, okay? So in the interest of showing you the technique that I actually suggest that you start off by adding to your variety of crochet sweaters, I wanna show you how you would slip stitch along the edge of a piece. So let's go ahead and we will take this piece right here and we're going to slip stitch along the edge up here. Now remember what I said, when we add beads to a project, typically those beads will be added as we're looking at the wrong side. So I wanna make sure I'm looking at the wrong side of this piece and I am going to join my yarn with a slip stitch to begin with. So let me join my yarn just to get that on here, right? And then I'm gonna put my hook directly in where I want it to begin adding stitches. And I'm literally just pulling these beads up towards my hook, okay? So they're up here towards my hook and I will pull a bead right up next to my hook, just one, yarn over and pull through and pull through, that's one. Now, if I want it in every single slip stitch, I make sure that there's a bead right next to my hook before I go to the following. And it gets a little bit faster as you get going because you get in sort of kind of a rhythm but you will notice that you want to make sure you have enough beads pretty strong to complete the entire section you are working on because you don't want to have to cut your yarn and rejoin. So really pre-stringing those beads is very, very important. And you can do this. I mean, of course, I'm using pony beads, so they're nice and big. But if you um, are using seed beads, it, you'll see that in the handout, there's a list of tools you can use to help pre-string items. Um, but there are beading needles that you can use. There's beading wire. I even know people who will use flossing, um, like the little plastic floss uh, tools to bead things. So it all depends on what yarn you're using and the size of the beads. Just a little tidbit here, the larger number on the bead size, that means it's a smaller bead. So a size six bead is actually bigger than a size eight bead, just so that you know. And I'm gonna go all the way to the end here, and then we'll flip this around and take a look. And again, I'm just doing slip stitches, right? So when I turn my work, you can see right here, I have an entire edge right here of just just a nice row of beads. I could have skipped every other stitch and added a bead. Uh, the beads could be a different color every other one. You could do anything you want. But this here, this is one of the easiest ways 
to incorporate beads to your piece. And, you know, this is great. Yeah, we're talking about sweaters, but it's a great way to add a little weight to um, shawls, to cowls, to anything you want to add a little bit of weight to. And just gives a little sparkle, a little razzle dazzle. You see that? All right. So that would be my number one tip for a great way to introduce working with beads is just use beads as a little slip stitch decoration around edges of piece, whether it is the hem or the cuff or the neckline or maybe around a pocket. It's just a great little embellishment for you to use. Anyways, does this excite you uh, to use beads in your next crochet project? Just remember, using beads is another great way to have fun with your yarn. Don't let it bog you down. Have a great time with it. I know that over here at MarleyBird.com, we have a lot of fun with beads, both crocheting with them and knitting with them. Shoot, we even did an entire event where we crocheted beaded charms that we then made into necklaces. If that's something you're interested in checking out, make sure you just let me know. Let me know. And uh, I'll send you all the details for those lovely crochet necklaces or knit necklaces if you're by crafty like me. Okay, everybody, as you are working with beads and doing your crochet or your knitting, do me a favor and snap a picture and share with me on social media. I would love to see how your creativity is getting translated into your crochet projects. It's just very exciting for me to see all of you put all of these lessons to work. I'm the Marley Bird over on Instagram, or you can always use hashtag MMMDI, which stands for Marley Made Me Do It. Okay, if you like this kind of a lesson or all of my patterns, you can check out the MarleyBirdHouse.com or my patterns over at MarleyBird.Etsy.com or MarleyBird.com. I'm, I'm all over. MarleyBird. When in doubt, MarleyBird. Thanks so much for joining me for this summit, and I can't wait to see how you use beads to embellish your crochet sweaters. Talk to you later, everybody. Bye. Live your life within the moment, moment And don't go wait until the morning, morning You never know when it is over, over All that I know is we'll get older, older So let us dance this night away